Welcome to our 2020 State of the City Address. I'm Mayor Craig Newton. I'm standing in our beautiful Lillian Webb Park, overlooking several of our construction projects here uh, in Norcross. The Brunswick right behind me along with as part of our Buford Highway Corridor study. Now this has been a challenging year for all of us. Navigating a world pandemic has certainly had its challenges. Now let me start by saying the state of the city is in good financial standing. You know, the life changes that accompanied COVID-19 has affected us all. The impact to our revenue stream was about 11% of our $13 million budget. But even with that encumbrance, the city of Norcross is in good financial standing. The city is debt free. We made cuts where needed. We ramped up our efforts relative to our fiscal viability as a city. I'm also pleased to announce that this year, 2020, is the first year that our tax digest has reached a milestone of over $1 billion in assessed property value for real and personal property for the first time in our history. And that happened this year on our 150th year anniversary. The general fund, SPLOS, sanitation and stormwater, and electric fund all have positive fund balance. Let me just say that again. They all have a positive fund balance, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later. I'm very pleased to share such a positive financial report, despite COVID-19. Now, Gwinnett has the highest confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Georgia with 29,866 confirmed cases and 436 deaths. Now, our zip code 30071 had the second highest number of confirmed cases in Gwinnett when this virus first began. Now it is in the lower 25 percentile because of you, because you were patient, because you followed our lead, encouraging you to wear masks, washing hands, social distancing, and limiting your gatherings. We realized the potential negative impacts of this virus several months ago on our community. The council and I met with staff to create a mitigation strategy to address both economic and public health concerns that this virus proposed. We began pushing out as much information and resources out to the community as much as possible via social media, email, and our website, and we continue to do so. Our council, boards, and staff transitioned to virtual meetings in order to safely continue operations. We also approved a forbearance program for all city-owned properties as a good faith effort, sending the message that we are all in this together. Watching the data and listening to health officials we made the call back in March to cancel all city-sponsored events through August, and now we've pushed them back through December. We also invited the Health Department Director, Dr. Audrey Arona, to give expert advice at our council meetings. Keeping the public directly informed with first-hand information and providing them a platform for questions on health and mitigation efforts firsthand was very important to us. Now we'll continue to monitor the situation and we'll, we will revisit this calendar again as more data and, product, and projections become available. We've had many new normals. This unconventional outdoor presentation is one of such changes, but often change presents along with that new opportunities. And in this case, the opportunity to walk around our city and show off some of the great things that are happening right here in Norcross. So come with me as we share some of the past, the present, and the future of the city of Norcross. 
Hello, we're here at our Norcross History Museum and uh, this museum was actually established in 2010. Uh, the house that we're in, you know, it was a house, now converted to our uh, History Museum, was uh, formerly owned by the Weathers family here in Norcross. And we saw the, the city saw the opportunity to purchase it and repurpose it. Uh, as a city project creating our Norcross History uh, Museum. I'm here with our director and curator, uh, Kate Kitchen. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the History Museum and some of the artifacts that are here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say that, first of all, um, we would welcome you to come to, to the um, Welcome Center and Museum. and. Uh, take a look at the different uh, storyboards that we have. We're, right now we're looking at the history of the baseball which was huge in Norcross back in the day and we actually had five boys from Norcross go to the major leagues which was a huge accomplishment back in you know the 20s, 1920s and, uh, and Norcross was such a small town. But um, in our other room which you'll see um, we have the entire history of Norcross so if you've ever been curious about um, the beginnings of our small town, um, you can come and take a look. And it's a full information center. We've got all of the collateral and uh, different rack cards that show you where to eat, what, where, what we have up there um, in town where you'd like to shop. Uh, we have our events that go on. So I encourage you to come on by and uh, take a stroll through our Welcome Center. We're standing in our artifact storyboard room and as I look around there is so much history uh, here to see in Norcross, so much to absorb. And Kate, you want to talk a little bit about where we are? Well, this was the first room that we attempted to put together to show the history of the city. We started with John J. Thrasher and we went through the entire history up until um, really 2000 and 12 or so so and then we over over the time we've been gifted so many um, things from different families that uh, have wanted us to keep these things um, alive and, and well here we um, did a notable family room and um, our very own mayor's family is featured in this room and uh, it's very interesting if you just if you love history come on down um, we would be glad to show you around Hi, we're still at the Welcome Center, and as you know, we're celebrating uh, here in Norcross 150 years, uh, our sesquicentennial. Uh, Kate has uh, come up with several gift ideas that she'd like to talk about in commemoration of our 150-year uh, celebration. Kate. Well, um, October is our birthday month, and so we had some items um, printed for for y'all to purchase if you'd like. This is our tote bag and it's a really nice tote bag. It's got a zipper. You can fit a lot of things in there and our license plate and uh, the tea towel. And I don't think many people have actually seen the whole tea towel itself. It's when you look at it, you see our shops. We, you see the train depot. It's all representative of downtown Norcross. And then we have the a DVD that was done a couple years ago and then the, the book about Norcross and our keychain. And then this is our um, ornament and the actual picture that this came from was a, a snapshot that we had taken downtown. And so if you'd like to purchase any of these things you can stop in here and buy them here or you can go downtown to any of the shops downtown, they're all selling them down there. Today, our heritage is a large part of our community and downtown, but there are some new things to appreciate too. Let's take a look at why so many residents and businesses have chosen to call Norcross home. You know, here at Norcross, we believe that art is an economic generator. As you go through Norcross, you'll see several pieces of art strategically placed in and around our city. This is just one such piece. Uh, it represents the Eastern Continental Divide, and that divide is where waters will flow either from the Gulf of Mexico or to the Atlantic Ocean. And this piece of art symbolizes uh, uh, that flow. 
As I mentioned before, in Norcross, we believe that art is also an, an economic generator. This is one of our most popular pieces of art. It's our Norcross frog. And I, you know, I believe it's very popular for a couple of reasons. One is because of its design, and the other is because it's therapeutic. People come and sit and enjoy Norcross and reflect. And if they want to talk to the frog, they can certainly talk to the frog, and he'll just sit there and listen. You know, 150 years ago, Norcross became Atlanta's favorite getaway. They escaped the hustle and bustle and the stress of downtown living by catching a commuter train called the Airline Bell. The Airline Bell had two routes uh, from Atlanta daily, and it came up to Norcross. People would either stay at some of the choice hotels or they would go and camp by the river. Fortunately for us here in Norcross, people would come and stay at our Brunswick Hotel. The Brunswick Hotel was located right across the street from Thrasher Park, um, just, a, just a half a block from here. The Brunswick Hotel was known for its rockers on the front porch and its chicken pot pies and friendly atmosphere. And the Brunswick Hotel lives on today through a new development that we'll talk about a little later. We are fortunate to have 13 beautiful parks here in the city of Norcross. I'd like to take a few minutes to highlight just a few of our many parks and their amenities that we are so fortunate to have in our city. I'll begin with one of our most popular parks, Lillian Webb Park. Now you got a sneak peek of this park earlier when I was on site sharing the exciting news of the new library that sits adjacent to this magnificent amenity. It's fitting that on our anniversary month that we share that Lillian Webb Park has a great deal of history associated with it, as it was actually the site of our old baseball field. You may not know, but the longest recorded home run in our recorded history was hit by a local Norcross native, Roy Carlisle. The home run was a total of 618 feet. Roy was a citizen of Norcross and played on that very field on a local baseball team here in Norcross. Today, the park amenities include a spectacular, one-of-a-kind tiered fountain, a splash pad, a gazebo, a large lawn area, and other amenities. Lillian Webb Park is also where we host many events like our Independence Day, our car shows, our community markets, and our international festival. One of our newest parks is Veterans Park. This special park project was completed in 2019 and sits on one acre at the intersection of North Norcross Tucker Road and South Peachtree Street. It was inspired by the fact that 21 veterans commit suicide daily. And this park provides passive recreation while honoring our veterans and provides a place of respite and reflection for our military veterans. It is one of the most respected and honored parks in our city. We're proud of all 13 beautiful parks located in the city of Norcross, and Pinnacle Park is certainly no exception. This park has been funded by SPLOST. In 2018, we had our groundbreaking. In 2019, in spring, is when we actually opened. And this is actually one of our newest parks. It was eight years in the making. Uh, located on the southeast side of our city, it's part of a long-held vision by council to provide equal access to green space and parks to underserved areas of our city. As you look around, the amenities include a lake, playground, fitness courts, nature-inspired trails, restrooms, picnic pavilions, just to name a few. This park will actually connect to our LCI Greenway also. This park was made famous by the 41 goats that were used to sustainably clear the vegetation. And these goats were actually featured on WSB and 11 Alive and got more attention than the park itself. But it was great PR. This park sits on 12 acres. It's a $1.9 million project. And we are proud of this beautiful gem of a park for our city. Rosie Brundage Park was named by then Mayor Lillian Webb 
honoring staff member Rosie Brundage, who worked for the city for more than 50 years. The park is a great asset to our special needs community. The playground was completed in 2018. It is entirely ADA designed to accommodate our special needs children in the city. We host an annual Easter egg hunt there also, including special needs egg hunt with uh, beeping eggs, swooping nets, and sensory friendly uh, areas and more. It is one of our active parks also for sports like baseball, softball, basketball, and soccer. An extension of Brundish Park is a project that holds a very special place in my heart, and that is the Hunter Walker Trail. This trail was named for A.H. Hunter, a local pastor and community activist uh, from our early days, and Tom Walker, a local successful entrepreneur who owned properties from Holcomb Bridge Road to Jimmy Carter Boulevard. The Brundage Park project was completed in 2018 and connects Kennemore Manor subdivision to Rosie Brundage Park. As you stroll uh, down the trail, you are in for a special treat. As you'll see, special art exhibits by local uh, artist Angelica Domish. There are several expansion projects that are scheduled for this park also, which includes another trail connection from Holcomb Bridge to our sidewalk network downtown to the new LCI Greenway that is currently under construction. So each park in Norcross has its own distinctive history, characteristic, and backstory behind it that is unique to our history and reflective of who we are in the city of Norcross. So I am proud as mayor to encourage you to take some time to explore and discover the magic of our great city parks. Placemaking can bring immediate benefits to our public spaces and people who use them. Our downtown core is a direct example of placemaking over a period of time. Our downtown is most often referred to as our city's economic engine. As mayor and council, we spend time observing, listening to, and asking questions of the people who live, who work, who play in our downtown in order to understand their needs and their aspirations for that place and for their community as a whole. I invite you to stroll the tree-lit streets of our historic downtown with its historic architecture and charm. You'll find unique shops and eclectic dining options from around the world and creative works of art throughout. We've also established a downtown dining district area where drinks can be purchased at local restaurants and enjoyed in designated outdoor areas. People and businesses relocate and remain here because of our family-oriented events, walkability, our quality restaurants and shops in an authentic historic downtown, along with entertainment and access to uh, the interstate transportation and other facts that help to keep our city safe and clean, all contributing to an appealing quality of life. These features help to define and distinguish us from other cities. To increase our economic viability and our vitality downtown, we must expand our city center. The area on the south end of our downtown is targeted for redevelopment and is the one and only pocket of underdeveloped property in the downtown district. We're excited and we look for opportunities to attract a quality development with a focus on sustainability on this site in our near future. Yes, we are on the construction site for our brand new uh, library. It sits on 1.5 acres uh, here on the corner of Britt and Buford Highway. The city partnered with Gwinnett County in 2017 where the county commissioners approved its construction. Now this library is going to be partially funded by SPLOS, along with the city's commitment of stormwater retention, underground utilities, and a $4.6 million parking uh, deck. This library is expected to be the most utilized library in Gwinnett County with over a thousand patrons a day. It'll have makerspace for entrepreneurs and creative projects. It'll have a community room uh, for our citizens to come and gather. It'll have computer space 
uh, for uh, young people to come and work on their homework and adults to uh, work on their projects also. And my favorite feature is an outdoor plaza opening up to Lillian Webb Park. Now, altogether, it's a total of $11 million in capital investment right here in the city of Norcross. We're standing in the lobby of the new Brunswick Residential Development. Now in 2018, along with our Downtown Development Authority, we closed on our construction loan and groundbreaking with New South as the general contractor, along with Gateway Ventures and Centro Development on this signature project on Buford Highway. Gateway Ventures is the developer for Tech Square and facilitated the expansion of Georgia Tech uh, campus across from I-85 and I-75 connector in Midtown. Now the Brunswick is situated on a 3.5 acre site on the corner of Holcomb Bridge and Buford Highway. This new residential community was named for the Old Brunswick Hotel, which is a 29 room hotel built by Norcross founder John Thrasher in 1870. The hotel was in operation until the end of World War II right here in Norcross. The Brunswick development will feature 185 multifamily units, nine live work units, all wrapped around a structured 280 car parking deck. And we believe that this development will add a much needed housing type to the current housing mix on Buford Highway. This is a $40 million capital investment the city supported uh, this development with an $8.1 million revenue bond, which funded portions of the infrastructure, like the parking deck, the utilities, the stormwater, and all will be secured primarily by parking fees paid uh, to, by the developer to the DDA. Now I'm sure that this development will also establish a standard for redevelopment along Buford Highway and will be a key pivotal point in our Buford Highway Master Plan. Conscious efforts were made by the developers to blend classic architecture with the modern architecture of our new adjacent library. So we're pleased that this project is currently leasing and generating a lot of economic interest right here on the Buford Highway corridor. We're here at Broadstone Junction. This 11 acre livable community is sitting on the former West Rock campus, which was formerly Rock 10 Box Factory. And many years before that, it was the Norcross Tannery. This development is in a great location. It's near Jimmy Carter Boulevard, Peachtree Industrial, and Buford Highway. Now we were pleased to begin discussions with Alliance Residential in 2017 on visioning this beautiful campus. The development features both for sale and rental units. Alliance Residential Realty is the developer for the multifamily portion, while Lanier Corporation is the developer for the townhomes. This is a very well-planned project. It's a $100 million development for the city of Norcross. We're here at the former site of the Garden Plaza Hotel, which was built in 1989. Now, I'm particularly proud of this project as we initially met with the Absalon Group, Hotel Group, to discuss the possibility of renovating this site for another extended stay hotel. Now, after about a year of negotiation, we finally agreed that the best use of this site was a high-end hotel, the Crown Plaza. This will be the city's first four-star hotel and only one of four in Gwinnett County. The location is great. It's near I-285, Jimmy Carter Boulevard, 141-140. And this features 235 rooms, three ballrooms, indoor-outdoor pools, a fitness center, and business center. The design plans calls for a mix of history and technology for the future, merging the history of the airline bell into the aesthetics of this first-class hotel. Scheduled to open spring of 2021, this is a $20 million renovation. The city of Norcross welcomes the Crown Plaza Hotel. So, I've taken you on a bit of a journey around our city. 
sharing our history over the last 150 years and the exciting plans that we have for our future. I'd like to just mention the Buford Highway Corridor, which is one of my long-standing passions because I actually grew up there and I witnessed the transition from a primarily residential area to a commercial corridor. Now because this transition was without plan or real guidance, it resulted in a corridor that never experienced its fullest potential. So I was pleased that the council moved forward with the new Buford Highway corridor study. So earlier this year, we chose the Sizemore Group to conduct an in-depth study and develop a plan for the Buford Highway Corridor. The study is being funded by the Electric Fund, which will focus on economic development, walkability, connectivity uh, to our new library and Lillian Webb Park, along with our downtown district. As you know, the Buford Highway is a regional transportation route. Its 1.8 linear miles handles roughly 30,000 average daily trips and serves as a prominent gateway into the city. The corridor now has become a target area for reinvestment and future growth for the city of Norcross and is already generating interest from local developers and investors. We anticipate that in the near future, this area's energy generated will be an extension of that already experienced in our downtown and will be a focal point for new multifamily living, retail shops, commercial activity, and entertainment right here in our city. As I mentioned before, I'm excited about the LCI Greenway project. You know, greenways and trails are an important part of keeping our cities healthy in addition to providing needed recreational space. Along with our 95,000 required for a match for preliminary engineering, our city was awarded $380,000 in Livable Centers Initiative, or LCI funds, for a pedestrian trail project. The Priority One segments of this Norcross Greenway project is well underway. The project proposes a multi-use trail adjacent to the roadways along South Cemetery Street, Mitchell Road, and Pinnacle Way, with connecting trails between those roadways. It integrates regional stormwater improvements with a proposed bicycle and pedestrian network. This project includes upgrades to existing sidewalks, landscaping, crosswalks, and connections to the new Pinnacle Park. The Greenway project begins at Mitchell Road at Buford Highway and ends at Beaver Ruin in two locations. As you know, multi-use trails increases surrounding property values and generates additional economic interests. So this is a pivotal project for East Norcross and will have a positive impact for this underserved area of our city almost immediately and in addition uh, for years to come. So in closing I'd like to share a couple of other projects that are on the horizon which include several townhome communities like Brumlow Park with 70 single-family homes just north of us near Old Norcross and Beaufort Highway as well as Pinnacle Townhomes off Pinnacle Way near Beaver Ruin Road. Adjacent to our new Pinnacle Park, it includes 24 units. A second phase of 14 units at Sierra West is also in progress, along with a yet unnamed development at 370 Thrasher Street with five units. And lastly, another multifamily development is also underway at Jimmy Carter Boulevard and Peachtree Industrial Boulevard. So in addition to the residential that I've mentioned, there are several business expansions and newly located businesses that have decided to make Norcross their home. But unfortunately, there's not enough time to share it all. So as you can see, we have much to celebrate here in Norcross. While it's true, our 150th anniversary party has had to be postponed until next year, there's no reason we can't take time to revel and all this amazing city has to offer. So go ahead, picnic in the park, walk your dog on our trails, spend time shopping and dining in our downtown. And most of all, participate in our future planning opportunities so that we can ensure that the next 150 years are just as filled with good memories and good times as the last. So happy birthday, City of Norcross. I'm proud to serve as your mayor.